Okay, so you want to automatically date and timestamp your data entries. So I'm going to show you two methods to achieve this. One with a simple formula. So for example, if I add a value here, automatically returns the date entered. If I was to change that, it would keep the date entered the same. Now the second method uses a little bit of VBA. So here, if I enter some data, it returns the date entered as before, but also I get a column last updated. So for example, if I went back to this first data entry here, currently last updated is 1217. I'll change this to a different number. It returns the current date and time, but keeps the original date entered the same. So let's see how this can be achieved. First thing I'm going to do is format these cells with the date and time format. So with the cell selected, right click, Format Cells. Then I'm going to go to the Custom Category down the side there. And in the Type box, I'm going to type the format for date and time. So that's DD slash MM slash YYYY space HH colon MM. Click on OK. Now to use a formula for this solution, we're going to use the IF function. And the first thing I need to check is whether A2 is not empty. If it is empty, I don't want to return the current date and time. The second thing I'm going to check is that B2 is empty. If it already contains a date and time stamp, I don't want to overwrite it. Now I'm using a nested if structure here. If you are used to using the ifs function, and if you have the ifs function in your version of Excel, then please feel free to use that comma. So if these two things are true, I want to return the current date and time, and I can use the now function for that. The now function returns the current date and time according to your system clock. Now I need to deal with the value of false for this nested if. So if B2 is not empty, then I want to keep the value in B2. So I'm just gonna return B2, and then close the bracket for the nested if. Now I need to deal with the value of false for our first if. So if A2 is empty, then I want to return an empty text string in B2. In other words, keep the cell blank. Now if I press enter, I get a blank cell. But if I type something in column A, what I'm expecting is a date and timestamp. Now the reason it's not working is because within my formula, I've got a circular reference. I'm referring to the cell address B2 when the formula is in B2. Now to get around that, what we need to do is go to File, Options, Formulas, and under Calculation Options, you need to tick Enable Iterative Calculations. So if I tick this, and I can change the number of maximum iterations to one, click on OK. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete my data there, type something in, and it gives me the date and time that I entered that value. Now let's copy this down and let's try it for other rows. You can see it works really well. Now I've waited a couple of minutes and I just want to see whether the date stamp changes if I change the data here. So if I change that value there, you can see that it stays the same, which is exactly what we wanted. We only want the date and time that the data was originally entered. Okay, so that is the method if you want to use a formula. The next method uses a little bit of VBA code. Let's go over and see how that can be achieved. Now with this solution, we're gonna record both the date and time that the data was originally entered, but also when it was last updated. Now, because we're using a VBA macro, you will need to save the workbook as a macro enabled workbook. So you can see here that I've chosen Excel macro enabled workbook.xlsm. Do not save the workbook as a normal Excel workbook. You will also want to show the developer tab on your ribbon. It won't show by default. So right click on one of the other tabs, go to customize the ribbon and tick developer down here on the right hand side. Then go to the Developer tab and click on the Visual Basic button. That will open up the Visual Basic Editor on your screen. Now, you will need to see the Project Explorer. And if you can't see it, just go to View, Project Explorer. 
and then you need to look for the workbook that you're currently working in. So I'm in the demo workbook. And then you need to double click on the sheet that you want the macro to apply to. So I've double clicked on sheet two there. Then at the top above the code window, where it currently says general, on the drop down list, select worksheet. And then in the second drop down list over here, change selection change to change. Then you can delete these two lines of code at the bottom here. So what we're doing is we're running this macro whenever there's a change to sheet two. I'm going to paste in the code that we need for this solution. I'll walk you through it and I'll also leave a link in the description of this video to this code. First thing you need to understand is this word target. Target is the cell that you are currently changing, or it may be cells. The next thing you need to understand is this variable that I've declared here, my data range. And I've said that my data range is the range A2 to A10. That may be different for your worksheet. The next line of code checks whether the cell that I'm changing is within this data range. If it isn't, then I don't need to do anything. I only need to perform this code if I'm changing a cell within this range. So assuming that a cell within this data range has been changed, I need to first of all check whether there's already a value in the date entered column. So as a reminder, I'm checking whether a value's already been entered in column B. And I'm doing that by using the offset method. So I'm checking whether the cell offset by no rows and one column to the right is empty. So if it is empty, I want to put the current date and time in that cell. So that deals with column B. Now we need to deal with column C, last updated. Now column C is easier to deal with. All I need to do is specify two columns to the right of my target cell and I need to enter the current date and time. And I enter that date and time irrespective of whether there is already a date and time in the cell. Now let's just check whether this macro works. So if I enter a value here, and you can see it puts the date originally entered in column B and the date last updated in column C. Now if I go forward in my time machine a few minutes, so the time is now 1313, I'll change this value to 56. You can see that the date entered stays the same, but the date last updated changes to 1313. Let's try it down here. See, it works. Now, what happens if I delete one of these values? You can see it leaves the date entered and date last updated as it is. Now, you may want that. If there is a deletion, you may want to know when it was deleted, which would have been that time. You can see there it's changed the time there to 1314 when I deleted it. Or you may want to get rid of the dates and time when you delete the values in column A. So let me show you how to do that. So I've entered some more lines of code here. The first thing I've done is declared another variable, my data. And that's because down here I'm using a for each next loop. So what I want to do is loop through each cell in the my data range, so range A2 to A10. And I want to check whether those cells are empty. So I go through each cell in column A, and if the cell is empty, then I clear the contents of column B and column C. So now with that in place, if I delete that value there, it deletes the corresponding dates entered and last updated. Now, one thing I didn't explain was this line of code here, on error, resume next. And that's to deal with situations where the end user deletes multiple values in column A. Basically, it prevents any errors occurring in that situation. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next video.